This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express. Time to get our HD Nation on. Voodoo is coming to the PC, right? Yeah. You're thinking Windows Media Center. We were super excited. Look, we have our wind faces on because Voodoo's HDX 1080p streaming looks fantastic. Yes, it does. And like quasi Blu ray ish. Unfortunately, <laughs> really is Voodoo's only going to be SD on the PC. What? If you do on a Blu-ray player, HDTV, or some other appliance, you get the full 1080p action. What excuse are they claiming? I, I'm pretty sure it comes down to negotiations. Security. Oh, really? No, it's like everything else. It's what do they have rights to do? Okay. What do they have the rights to? What do they have the rights to? What do they have the rights to? I, I'm guessing. I need that software on my, my desktop. Yes, you do. Badly. It's so a home I, theater PC. I will. You begging for some Voodoo HD. <laughs> in more cheerful news, Netflix will be getting all the Star Trek TV series in July. TrekMovie.com says the original Star Trek, Star Trek: The Next Generation, Star Trek: Deep Space Nine, Star Trek: Voyager, and Star Trek: Enterprise, TOS, TNG, Voyager, and Enterprise will all become available on July 1st. Oh. DS9 will launch on October 1st. TOS and Enterprise will be available in HD. The only Trek TV that Netflix will not be streaming is Star Trek: The Animated Series from the 70s, as that show was not included in the CBS deal. End quote. I suspect epic sick day reporting in geek heavy job fields come July. <laughs> hey, and from the holy cow, that's a big department. Sharp began shipping a 70 inch Aquos Quatron LED LCD this week. 69.5 inches of screen to be exact. Uh, they're quick to note that a 70 inch HDTV offers quote, 62% more screen area than a 55 inch LCD that seem to be all the rage right now. This TV will include Cinema Now, Netflix Voodoo, and Voodoo apps, uh, DLNA support, video streaming or built in, along with uh, basically Wi Fi to feed the whole darn thing. And we're just trying to figure out how Sharp is delivering the, an LCD this big with a $3,800 MSRP. That's, that's pretty impressive for that price tag. Yeah. I'll have to see what the quality looks like. Maybe they'll send me one. Maybe they will. I will ask nicely. I, I just want to verify that Voodoo is doing SD in the browser on the PC. Yeah. SD only. Hey, you know what? That said, Walmart now owns Voodoo, so oh. who knows? It's, it's basically studio restrictions, but who knows what Walmart can pull out. I'm just, I just double checked, because you know, you were hurting there for a moment. I'm just, I, 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 You want your HDX. I, I get it with my Netflix, but I'd love to see some HDX in my home theater PC. Voodoo makes shiny video. That would make me happy. Another big HD news, Peter Jackson going 48 frames per second for The Hobbit. Big announcement he put out on the Facebook. Nice. Nice. Why 48 frames per second? And not that you're going to see a movie about furry-footed people because you hate hobbits with a fiery passion not, most I'm people not. reserve for political parties. I might see The Hobbit. But you might. I might. Yeah, because anyway, you loved Lord of the Rings. Main advantage. I mean, most, most <laughs> movies up to this point for the last 90-some-odd years have been basically captured at 24 frames per second. And if you try to move the camera too quick or if an object's moving too quickly through the frame, you get a lot of blurring or other really annoying artifacts. This will help eliminate some of that, and it will overall just improve the clarity and detail of every frame shot. Now, it should also, because they're maintaining that frame rate, uh, a frame rate that's similar, or basically 2x of 24, mm -hmm. it should still maintain that cinema-like look. Feel. The feel of it. And I think this will be a good thing, and especially for 3D content, where detail, the more detailed that picture that can be captured, the better. I think he's eyeballing this toward producing 3D content with it and, and producing better quality 3D content with that. It's interesting. Apparently, uh, they're using red cameras to shoot that also. All digital. We're going to try to get Alec Lindsay, our, our man from Digital Pixel Garage, on to talk Start about the finish. some of the announcements that came out of NAB. Nice. We can talk about Final Cut Pro, but we'd put you all to sleep. <laughs> hey, I have a quick follow-up to my review last week of JVC's beautiful DLA X3 front projector. The IR emitter and the 3D glasses I showed, uh, those were optional. Uh, for the curious, the 3D sync emitter lists for about $80. And those spiffy 3D glasses, $180 a pop. So if you're going to be throwing down, that's a little bit extra on top of that $4,500 layout for the, the X3 model. I still really want to touch, try out the X7, though, and digital cinemas three-chip DLP projector, but that's a whole nother story. Yeah, but, but, but HCTVs are coming. They are. We've had a lot of people like, the projectors are really nice. Projectors I are like cool. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, this week already, uh, sitting over 
about 25 feet away from me. Panasonic has graciously loaned us two of its latest 2011 HD TVs to test and review. Basically, we're going to look at the TCP50 ST30. That's the 50-inch model in the company's ST30 series of 1080p plasma televisions. Uh, it features some of the same terrific display technology that Panasonic introduced in its premium 2010 models last year, including high-performance phosphors, uh, panel and filter improvements that create deeper black levels and increase the efficiency of the light emitting from the display. And, and of course, 3D. However, the price has been decreasing quite nicely. You can get this tech now for that 15 inch screen size listing at $1,500. Really? That's pretty impressive to That's me. That's cheap. Yeah, for, for something that arguably was the top of the line last year, a brand new model. <clears throat> it kind of excites me. And of course, we're going to be looking at one of their 3D, uh, not 3D, it's just an LED LCD television. The TCL 42E30, 42 inch, 1080p, LED lit, $1,100 price tag. Features an IPS panel technology similar to what LG uses for improved vi viewing angles at wide angles, basically improved viewing at wide angles. Also, it's a 120 hertz refresh rate, easy IPTV that includes access to Netflix, Pandora, Amazon, Instant Video, and more. I'm unpacking these later this week, I think day after tomorrow, and we'll have the review in time for next week's episode of HD news. Speaking of which, Mario emailed in, I'm in the market for a new TV. My girlfriend's old CRT just blew up. Ooh. Love plasma, but thinking about switching to LED. Room is dimly lit and can go dark. Need help. D8000 UN or PN are new and don't have proper reviews out yet. Please help. Budget's 2300 bucks. Looking to buy within a week. Love the show. Keep up the good work. P.S. When will you guys do another surround sound episode? Thanks, Mario. Um, one. Some serious surround sound coverage coming up in a couple weeks, or about a month actually, late May, early June. We're going to get some serious surround sound action going on. Uh, the D8000, um, the LED LCD flat panels are freaking gorgeous. We've got one in the house. It's freaking gorgeous. And compared to the D7000, which right. has a similar design, uh, you get slightly better dark black levels mm -hmm. with the D8000. I actually would love to measure both of them. I can get my hand on both. But he, he we, as soon as he, we are waiting for for the sort of the test panel to come in. We've got one around to play around with. I, I, I would be pleasant. I no, actually, but for I would a twenty-three hundred dollar price tag, though, that's going to be hard. Forty-six is doable. Forty-six is that's actually right in the ballpark the for 55 that. Fifty-five, fifty-five is closer to three grand. Yeah. So you're looking there. Although I've, I've seen some return, like the return refurb stuff on Amazon for the 8,000. You're not going for that. Nah. Don't do that. <laughs> don't take your chances on that. Optoma's bargain HD20 and HD 180 showed up on deals.woot.sellout or slash sellout. Uh, super cheap again last week, which led to a Ooh. frenzy of tweets to me around the bargain priced 1080p projector. So I'll say it again. There's really no difference between the HD20 and the HD 180. There's like, technically, I think one is supposed to have more contrast than the other. Um, in, in the real world, it's going to be almost indistinguishable. Uh, CRT JIR 46, or I should say at CRT JIR 46, uh, opened up a slightly larger can of worms and he asked, at Patrick Norton, should I be worried about the Optoma projector being refurbished? Right now, that is my only reservation. Look, I buy refurbished products all the time. I don't, but on that, because of the price being so darn attractive. It was like 650 last time. And after day. seeing the one you got, it, it was beautiful. I mean, it was clean, uh, mm -hmm. didn't smell funny. It mm -hmm. was had a good bulb system in it, lamp projector, or the lamp module in the projector was fine. Uh, it, it looked about as clean as I could ask for. Uh, right. and, you know, and about 10 seconds out of the box, it's going to be in you know used condition again anyway. So yeah, I mean the 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 factory you know open box deals are a little scarier to me, especially because like uh, uh, you know Best Buy for example, a lot of the open box deals in Best Buy are like 10 bucks off the Best Buy price right. when you can get it for half the Best Buy price on Amazon. Okay, maybe a third less on Amazon. It's, you know what I mean? So so know the price. Know if you're getting a real good deal. You know for a $900 projector that's factory refurbished, so it's got a factory warranty from a major company. Um, I'm less worried about that refurbished. I've bought several refurbished iPods, several refurbished MacBooks, several refurbished Dell outlet monitors. I prefer that over, say, a retailer with an open box item, mm -hmm. something like that. If it's fa if the factory took a look at it and said, you know what, well, we give the nod to this product, then yeah, I, yeah. Think that, I think that's a safe bet. Yeah, but for refurbished, keep an eye on whether or not there's a full warranty or not. Usually there is. And just, you know, caveat emptor. <laughs> Let the buyer beware. <laughs> hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of April 19th, 2011. First up, The King's Speech. This 2011 Best Picture winner stars Colin Firth as King George VI and follows his struggle to overcome his stutter. This Region A locked release comes on a single 50 gigabyte disc with an MPEG-4 ABC codec and a 178 to 1 aspect ratio. Blu-ray.com gives the transfer a 3.5 out of 5, calling it steady but slightly underwhelming. 
The audio comes in a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 lossless track, which Blu-ray.com calls wonderfully clear and accurate. Extras on the disc include a director's commentary, a 23-minute making of featurette, a 22-minute Q&A with the cast and crew, a 10-minute overview of the real speech therapist portrayed by Jeffrey Rush, plus two full speeches from the real King George VI, his pre-war speech from 1939, and his post-war speech from May 1945. Next up, The Last Legion. This one also stars Colin Firth, along with Ben Kingsley, in this 2007 film about the fall of the Roman Empire. It didn't exactly get great reviews. It scored a 17% on Rotten Tomatoes. However, Patrick liked it, saying it's, quote, kind of awful in that awesome old school epic way. This region free release comes with a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 soundtrack and a 235 to 1 aspect ratio. Also released this week, Mortal Kombat! Hey, to coincide with the launch of the new Mortal Kombat video game, both the 1995 Mortal Kombat film directed by Paul Anderson and the 1997 Mortal Kombat Annihilation are being released on Blu-ray today. Both films come on a single region-free 50 gigabyte disc with a VC1 codec, a 185 to 1 aspect ratio, and a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 mix. Plus, each one comes with a redeemable code for a free exclusive Jade character costume for the PS3 version of the new game. Extras on these discs are sparse. The first film comes with an animated piece called Mortal Kombat, The Journey Begins, and both include the video game trailer, but not much else. And as always, check out our show notes at techzilla.com or hdnation.tv for the rest of this week's Blu-ray releases. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, Go to Assist Express. If you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends, or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way without being there in person? The best way to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. It lets you view and control another computer online so you can quickly resolve technical issues. You can help friends learn how to use their new software and fix family computer problems without being there in person. Techzilla viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techzilla. That's gotoassist.com slash techzilla for a free trial.